Tim, thank you for being here. Now, Tim, people know you best as the occasional guitarist with Dave Matthews Band, but uh, your career actually goes back long before the uh, band began playing together. Tell me how you got started with music and about your early influences. Well, I kind of came up from a musical family, and they always came with the church and sang in church, so even though that wasn't the kind of music that I wanted to do, there was already music, you know, happening in my family, and my sister always brought you know, Beatle Records, so as soon as I heard that, I was hooked, you know, I used to play air guitar with my Tonka fire engine ladder, so that's kind of what got me started, and everything since then has kind of influenced me, you know, from the late 60s, early 70s, all up to now, you know, like Jimi Hendrix to Nine Inch Nails, really? to me it's all, you know, just that big umbrella of all music, you know, even like Ravi Shankar, you know. So I just like it all. I mean, you know, obviously there's some music I don't like, but I don't really focus on that, you know. Right. Tim, tell me about the early days of your career at Miller's and Tracks and uh, playing with so many great musicians back in Charlottesville back in the 80s. Well, it's funny. When I moved to Charlottesville, it was kind of to get away from the city of St. Louis where I lived before, and I kind of was disillusioned or dis... What's the word? I was just kind of fed up with whatever little bit of the music business I was exposed to, which was basically just playing the local clubs. I went to Charlottesville just to kind of, as a breath of fresh air, and actually started meeting musicians that were from New York, uh, jazz musicians, and I was really into jazz, so I kind of started playing a lot of jazz in Charlottesville, and uh, started playing every Monday night at Miller's in a kind of experimental mode, playing with just effects and doing crazy stuff, and dropped that and did sitar there for a while, and kind of learned how to play like violin and a few things at Miller's on Monday nights, and uh, eventually kind of gravitated toward acoustic guitar. I mean, it was over a 10-year period, so it was kind of many phases of Monday night, whatever, and uh, the acoustic guitar to me was kind of a good thing to utilize the things I'd learned playing the sitar and the violin and mandolin. You know, it was really a rich-sounding instrument, and I always played acoustic guitar some, but not totally as a solo instrument, but it seemed like the, the logical, whatever, uh, logical step or in a way a conclusion of a lot of experiments you know what I mean so I still kind of experiment with it but you know a lot of the things that I learned from other things kind of came together like even all styles of music on acoustic guitar you can see how they're all much more similar as opposed to if you're playing heavy metal with distortion in a Marshall or if you're playing Indian music on a sitar you can kind of bring those together on an acoustic because it all acoustics rock in their own way if you're sitting by it you can feel it I mean obviously on a record player it's different but anyway an attempt to answer that question. I, uh, I read that you were the one that suggested that Dave Matthews form a band around a decade ago. What influenced your decision not to become a full member, and in uh, what direction has your career gone since then? Uh, let's see, as far as the band thing, I had a band starting in the mid to 80s that I kind of always, once I started to have my own band, I realized that was the thing I wanted to do, which was really more like representative of just writing my own music and doing a solo thing, and a band was just kind of the first step in writing music. I was really inspired by Bob Marley to write music. Uh, wow. I had been playing jazz for years, but whenever you'd write something with jazz chords, it would sound like jazz. So Bob Marley was in a completely different direction, totally simplified verse chorus, you know, and that kind of inspired me to start writing music. And uh, Dave used to come and, and watch my band, and he would sing a couple times. And I just thought, well, this guy's already got his own musical identity. He should have a band instead of, like, playing in the band that I had. It would be, like, not even fair to how much music he already had in him, you know what I mean? And so, he, you know, people around Charlottesville kind of gravitated toward his charisma and talent, to, you know, and started a band. He had a manager right off from the bat. And since I already had a band and already had already been doing that for several years, I knew that it wasn't really my path to just kind of go and do somebody else's thing because it was almost be like, I don't know, I'd already kind of realized that what I wanted to do was my own thing, whether it was successful or not. And uh, But obviously, as soon as Dave started having a band, it was clear that they were successful on a local level. And after a short period of time, that you know went into more like a bigger local and then national level. So... Uh, so for me, it was never really any question. I mean, I thought about it several times, you know, very seriously. I would even ask my mom, you know, should I join this band? She would go, yeah, go for the money, go for the money. Uh, and I even, you know, was very close to that, you know, whatever you want to call it, that decision, but it never really went all the way. Although, 
you know, it, to compensate for not really doing it full time, I recorded with them and all that, which we had already played acoustic duet gigs. As, you know, as soon as the band started playing, as soon as Dave had songs, we would do them in Charlottesville locally, and they were always really successful, kind of intimate gigs. So as the band got bigger, those little gigs kind of got bigger in a much smaller way to the point of an experimental tour in 96, which is, that's how they recorded Live at Luther College. And then we did another one in 97 for longer. And then in 99, we did like a full-on tour with releasing the album. So, and that's kind of was enough for me. And that gave me, uh, you know, financial ability to go and tour with my band and not really have to make money. So, and... And then also I had held off on doing my own solo thing when I moved to New Mexico because I wanted to do a band thing for a while. So this is kind of having held back on doing a full-on solo thing, which I did a lot in Charlottesville for like 10 years. I just kind of, you know, kind of got more music together for it. You know, I kind of held off on it because I hadn't written any music. And uh, having developed writing music with the band to, not really a science, but figuring out a way to have writing inspiration be more accessible which is just like really just sitting down and playing music as opposed to thinking i gotta be inspired to write something it's more like music is already there just go to it and it'll come it'll give you what whatever so i used that same kind of approach on writing acoustic music and it really was almost even easier because i didn't really have to teach it to anybody i could just figure it out and kind of develop it on myself and it's also very free in the performing part because you can be more spontaneous you know when it's just by yourself you know right. 